You're listening to the CD Baby. CD Baby. CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 140 of the CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast. My name is Kevin, and joining me for this roundtable edition of the show is Chris and The Bolt. Hey guys, how you doing? Hi. Hey. Hey. Uh, hey, the Bolt's got some news. Should he? Sh- yeah, you got some big news to share with us. Uh, yeah, I uh, about three weeks ago had my first child, a true CD baby. That's huh. right. So uh, I'm I'm joining the other two podcasters and being a father. <laughs> so it's about time. <laughs> and and uh, are you sleep deprived right now? Oh my gosh! So last night was about three hours of sleep. And, uh, and I was like, I gotta, like, I was like, tonight I'm going to bed early or last night I was like, I'm going to bed early. Like I'm, I'm going to take a nap. Desiree went out with our, our Ezra, our child, uh, to the store. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take a nap. And I sort of forgot that I had said that I would babysit my nephew and he arrived right when I was about to take a nap and <laughs> oh, it didn't happen. So I didn't get to bed till late and, and, uh, I'm running on about five hours of sleep last night so it's a little bit better <laughs> wow I forget, as a new dad you have to find time to be a good uncle too that's crazy that is yeah, crazy I, mean, I yeah i forgot i i figured i'd be you know his bedtime's 8 30 i figured that i wouldn't be trying to go to bed at 8 30 but i was <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's that's exciting news uh i still haven't seen the baby you haven't even well i i take that back in person or in, I've seen a photo of the baby. Yes, yeah. I have not not seen it in person yet. He hasn't made it out into the world that many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll get there. He'll get there. Well, uh, there's lots of stuff going on. I'm uh, in the middle of a pledge music campaign for Small Town Poets. I, I think I might have said it on the show. I know I said it to you guys that uh, after I did a fan funded campaign with Hello Morning um, using Rocket Hub, uh, I think I said I would never ever do that again. <laughs> but, but they sucked me back in. Uh, we are doing a, a, a pledge music campaign and I'm actually very much liking the pledge music platform. I think it uh, is very different than Kickstarter or the other platforms out there where you kind of just create a page and then uh, have to rely on existing excitement about your music. Um, and you don't really have tools to kind of fuel excitement around the actual project as it unfolds. So uh, it's been nice. They've got a lot of great tools and, and everything that, uh, that have sort of saved us from uh, having a miserable failure. What are some of those tools? Well, I think one of the biggest things is two things I would say. One is they assign you a a rep and they work with you to optimize your campaign ahead of time. And it isn't just like, okay, your photos, you got a photo. That's good. It's actually, they do spend time going, uh, especially working with like the items to the pledge items. They spend some time with you, which is where we struggled. And uh, they actually suggested something that was like, how on earth did we forget that like they're they're uh uh, this album's uh another christmas album and they suggested well you should make one of the items a a signed christmas card from the band i'm like how on earth did we not (laughs) i mean i seriously felt like an idiot after that but it was like those kind of things that they suggest and they help uh you know they make suggestions about optimizing uh you know your your story and all that kind of stuff so it really they really are looking at it. It's not like, Hey, you know, that they didn't put pictures of, they didn't put porn in places or things like that. They're actually looking at it and (laughs) and strategizing along with you. And the other thing is, and this is what kind of where I say saved us. Uh, it's still going and we've got a long way to go. We haven't, uh, had like an explosive, um, like read our, meet our goal in four days kind of experience. But, uh, they, it kind of has like a blog feature on it. And, you know, ahead of time they were suggesting, you know, once, you know, they suggested build up the, the, you know, the engagement with 
the fans on Facebook and Twitter and, and just kind of optimize your website and stuff? Because, you know, we we would fall into what would be called a legacy band. We're not out there touring. We have, uh, you know, our big success was uh, some time ago and before Facebook and all that stuff. So it's like, all right, we need to build up the engagement just so people are engaged with the band. And that was great advice. And we were using a lot of classic content to get people like really excited about us again. But then we launched it and we got some some pledges out of the gate. But this blog platform was really instrumental to like doing creative content that you have to pledge in order to see. So the one thing we did yesterday that drove uh, a pretty big, big day of pledges was we used to do this 70s medley that was just so much fun to play. And the audience would just be like. After that, we could do whatever we wanted. Everyone was just like in the palm of our hand. It was just such a fun <laughs> moment in the set. It was about a 10-minute medley of songs from the 70s. And uh, I was going to release it, and I thought, uh, you know, I'll just title it that 70s medley or something. But then I tied it into the fact that one time we played it, uh, the promoter, I'll just say, did not appreciate it. The sound system went off in the middle of it. And our road manager came up on stage saying we were asked to leave the stage. What? <laughs> so, did he so, hit the seventies, or did they not pay their ass cap fees? That's a that's a whole different story altogether. Well, we <laughs> another time. Uh, no, uh, but so I thought, okay, that's more intriguing. So I titled the post. We got kicked off the stage when we played this, and with pledge music, you can make certain blog like the blog that's running on your pledge page, certain items can be visible to everyone or other items can be just teasers to folks that uh, uh, haven't pledged. And for those who have pledged, getting real exclusive content. And so that, that piece of content, you hear like the first bit of the first song we play and then it cuts if you're not in the campaign. But because, <laughs> because kind of formulating it around that, uh, that intriguing title, and I will say the medley is quite good. Uh, that it drove a lot of a lot of interest and in, and in actual pledges because they wanted to hear the content and also the engagement around the the content that's happening. More and more people are are you know weighing in and commenting on stuff, and it's happening on the pledge music page. So that has been an incredibly useful tool. That uh, uh, at first, you know, I would have thought, ah, oh, you know whatever they say you should you should use that but it has been to our advantage in fact somebody commented yesterday this whole campaign's been a, a lot of fun the way the way you guys have been doing things and so they've you know they've felt like they are actually getting insider material that's actually stuff we've never released before because they are a part of the campaign and so i've been digging through the archives to try and find a whole lot more of that stuff to to keep people intrigued so yeah. that's the one th one thing that pledge has that has been really useful. And uh, so, yeah, I've, I've, if you want to check it out, just go to pledgemusic.com, uh, search Small Town Poets, it'll come up. Um, and for, for a couple of days, you guys were right on the homepage along with um, like five other 90s bands, right? It was Weezer, Us, Bush, and Live. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a 90s spectacular. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, I posted online that it was a, uh, a Weezer small town poets Bush sandwich because all three of us were together. So <laughs> it was it was it was fun. So so yeah, check it out. If and you know we got a long way to go to our goal. So if you if you want to support the project, that's appreciated as well. <laughs> but yeah, so that's uh you know that that was a a long explanation of that. But that between having a job and marketing here at CD Baby, running that campaign and actually working on the record, um, I think I've pretty much broken my brain. So <laughs> I've given, given myself permanent adult onset ADD. I can't focus on anything, <laughs> but I'm just full of stress all the time. <laughs> Are you still so. doing a lot of spark? No, but uh, there, you know, there's been some other things in the mix <laughs> to stimulate. <laughs> Nothing illegal. Nothing illegal. <laughs> Spark of that energy drink powder, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's been another energy 
drink in the mix that's uh you're snorting ritalin aren't you yeah <laughs> just that and uh, you know anything that i can get my hands on no so it is <laughs> it, it has been a fun process because uh uh, we are still making the record. So as the fans have been interacting with the pledge campaign, like one thing that popped up is uh, that it wasn't expected is all these people wanted uh, to buy that medley that we posted, which there's licensing issues. So we, we, we'd have to sort that out, which would be difficult. But um, people wanting a whole bunch of live stuff. And uh, I, so I do have some live things that I'll be posting. And so it's like realizing, OK, once you get them intrigued and and you know, if you have the fans that are interested in hearing stuff, that exclusive content can, you know, people were pre-ordering the album, you know, for 10 bucks, get access to that content. So. CD baby. CD baby. Music. Music. News. Well, there's lots of big news items this week. Uh, probably the biggest one being the release of the new YouTube album, which we'll discuss a little bit later. So I'm going to hold on to that one. But uh, there were some other big items that have happened since we last chatted that we should discuss. And first off, I mean, come on, we, we got to talk about CD Baby Free. So artists are no longer artists no longer need to pay a one time sign up fee to sell digital downloads on CDBaby.com or through our promotional tools such as the CD Baby Music Player, which is brand new and fantastic, or our music store for Facebook for opening up CDBaby.com retail site to every musician on the planet. So yes, even if you use TuneCore or another distributor, you can now get access to the 1.5 million music fans who hit CDBaby.com every month looking for music. And uh, you can also use the 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 music player that's uh, brand new and all that kind of stuff. It's a pretty cool deal. I'm excited about it. And yeah, just I, to be clear, if, if you're being distributed through TuneCore, you can sell that same exact material through CD Baby Free, not just different yeah. material. Yeah, think of it as like a band camp. It's, you can sign up something like, uh, you know, if, if you have tracks that, um, the typical thing that we say is like, or that we see happen is artists have B-sides, or live cuts or things that they want to put online for people to hear. But, um, you know, they just put it on SoundCloud or throw it somewhere else. And but they want to be able to stream it on a player. Now you can do that all from CD Baby. It's, it's CD Baby Freeze digital only. So you can give tracks away um, or you can sell them. Um, you know, some people have asked, how is this actually free? If you guys, because we do take a 15% commission on sales. It's like, well, what we see a lot of artists doing is that they have these other tracks that they don't even necessarily want to sell. They just want to put it in the music player on their website. And so this gives them a way to do that um, without having uh, to, you know, to pay a sign up fee. And, you know, the more I've thought about it and the cool thing is, I think it's really important to have your rarities, your B-sides that you may want to be given away for free alongside uh, your rest of your catalog that is for sale. And you never I know people might start buying it that's kind of has been doing this pledge music campaign and seeing how you know they're focusing on hey putting the focus on a place where the content could be monetized you know soundcloud they can't buy it they can link to other places sure and also just having the like kind of peace of mind or whatever you call it of, of keeping all your content in one place you know it's like a lot of people probably have an album on CD Baby and a couple singles on SoundCloud, a couple songs on Bandcamp, but this way you just get it all in one place. Yeah, and you know we have big plans for CDBaby.com now that this has been placed. This is kind of one of the things that has been working behind the scenes, and I'm personally really excited about what we're gonna, what we have on the roadmap to help artists sell more music through CDBaby.com, and uh, just making a, a really cool place where uh, people want to go to get and discover new music. So. Um, yeah, so it's exciting. So check it out. I don't know if I, one of the coolest things I always think about cdbaby.com is one that's probably the largest uh, indie music store online. And it's probably one of, the, it's probably the oldest as well. I mean, it's been around since um, the early days of the internet. And it's been a destination for thousands of people all over the, all over the world. I mean, one of the things I've always loved about selling music on CD Baby is every couple of months, like I'll get a sale from some state in the U.S. or maybe even another country, 
and I'll have no idea how they found my music. I'll just, you know, it just will boggle my mind. I'm like, who is this person? How did they find me? <laughs> and, you know, for the most part, they found me because they were shopping on cdbaby.com. Those I was wrong, huge man. in the Netherlands for a little while there. I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah, it, it is. It is crazy. It, especially the, the cool thing about CD Baby Free is uh, one thing that is we've tried to go more international. This is a really a big boost for international artists. Um, us Westerners may not know this, but in some countries, uh, it's really hard for them to get credit cards and sometimes credit cards that work outside of uh, their own country. So like we're doing a lot of work in Brazil and the the average person doesn't have a credit card. So signing up to distribute their music is a lot of times really isn't an option, but they want to get it on live online somewhere for sale. And so this gives them access to start uh, selling without having to uh, try to figure out how to pay for distribution. But I should be clear that CD Baby Free does not include distribution to iTunes and all the rest. It does not include our YouTube monetization program and it doesn't include CD sales either. So if you want those things, you got you got you got to pay the a little little cash for that but uh it's still worth it the meager one-time setup fee right. that's right only 12.95 for a single that's nothing that's without lunch. that without that sign up fee all of this goes away the three of us <laughs> cease to exist <laughs> <laughs> like uh like yoda and that's Trump that's right. just sort of that's right into the ether that's right <laughs> um all right, moving on, SoundCloud, I mentioned them just a second ago. They are working on a way to pay artists. SoundCloud is adding advertising to fund payments to artists and labels who agreed to participate in the new Premier Partner Program. The terms of the invite-only program have not been disclosed. A deal with major labels is expected to be announced soon, but the focus of this announcement was about reassuring the hundreds of thousands of indie artists who use the platform that they may be able to make money there. Thank uh, here's, goodness. <laughs> here's how here's kind of how it works. SoundCloud membership is now divided into three tiers. The partner tier is free and allows new users to join the community, share their first track, and get feedback and basic stats. The pro level offers more upload time and features more detailed stats. Premier Partners adds the exclusive features, promotional opportunities, and you can start making money on the platform. For now, access to the Premier level is by invitation, but uh, SoundCloud says that will change soon. The introduction of advertising is an important step for creators. Every time you see or hear an ad, an artist gets paid. If you're in the US, you'll start to experience occasional ads from our brand partners. We're bringing ads on gradually, the company said in a statement. In addition to supporting creators, ads will keep the service free and open to people to listen to SoundCloud. Audio ads will only be served on the content of Premier Partners with their explicit consent. If you have a free Pro or Pro Unlimited account, you will not have any audio ads placed on your tracks. So they say right now. <laughs> so, so to me, this all this can sound oh, that's that's a good thing. In my mind, what's frustrating about this is one, you know, we reported earlier that they. They did a backroom deal with some of the labels, so some of the major la the major labels now own a stake in SoundCloud in exchange, you know, for probably some cash and um, and also the ability for them to kind of look the other way because you know the the streaming that happens on SoundCloud by law does trigger certain rights that aren't being paid for, and so similar to what YouTube has done to address the issue, they're gonna go the ad route and do like content ID and try and so absolutely ads will be on everything eventually. There's, there's, that's what's coming. It has to, it's the only way they could support what, what uh, expectations the labels will want. Um, but you know, it just, it just for a service that was built on the indie creator. I mean, that's what made SoundCloud popular. It seems like they just did a 180 and said, we're not interested in you guys. So that's what's kind of stinky to me. Also, the, the, the other piece that's been making news is if, if you look in their terms of service, I guess they have the what's called the, uh, let me, I've got a link here, having to do with their API, that if you don't turn some function off, you're basically agreeing to allow uh, third parties to access their API and stream your music for free um, and uh, not get compensated for it. 
And when you say for free and no compensation, are you including performance royalties or any kind of digital mechanicals that would be owed for? Well, most likely the digital mechanicals. Uh, let me see this. This article is loading. Yeah, it's if turning off API access. That's what what the function is. If you don't turn that off, um, it basically you're granting third parties to access the API and use your music for free. So I could build an app that uses the SoundCloud API and serves up tracks to people all day long, like my DJ app. Listen to Kevin's DJ app, and and I could use SoundCloud's API and just pull the music from there, and I wouldn't have to pay for it. So it seems like. I don't know exactly what royalties would be owed in those cases, but you know, let's say it's, it's some sort of a publishing administrator that's going after collecting those things. It seems like SoundCloud, even if you, they get you to sign something in the terms of service, doesn't really have the right to not pay you something that legally they have to pay. And the person that's in charge of collecting that money isn't going to care. The individual artists like waived their rights. Well, here's the issue. You can waive your rights because you own the music. So, you get to decide what happens. The laws are just there to protect you uh, to, to in, be able to enforce those rights. So if I want to, you know, play my music, oh, say, hypothetically, I play my music in a club and I don't get compensated for the performance royalties that it generates. Uh, <laughs> That's but, never uh, happened, has that, it? That would, ha would never happen. Hypothetically. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <Hypothetical>. <laughs> uh, then... I, it's my right to do that with it. It's like, you know, I, I can play venues that don't uh, don't have license deals with ASCAP or BMI. And, and it's my choice if I'm as long as I'm playing my own music where it becomes an issue for something like uh, SoundCloud is that, you know, so many people are uploading cover songs. And that's that's where it becomes a, an issue for them having to figure out how to restrict it. But as far as me signing up my own tracks that I say I own outright 100%, is if I unknowingly check a mysterious box that's not really uh, visible to me and I don't understand what API access means, yeah, I, I just waived all those rights. It's shady, but I did. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Can you just as easily unwave them by unclicking it and I imagine you probably can, right? It's just a setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a setting. Okay. That's, yeah, you can go in there. But anyway, so that's interesting. Uh, one final, final piece of news that I that I found before we dive into discussion about U two, uh, paid for, uh, paid for streaming music subscription services have experienced significant growth in both the U S. and key markets in Western Europe, with paid for subscribers in these territories expected to double to over 20 million in 2014 compared to 2012, according to the latest research from Future Source Consulting. So some just positive news out there about the growth in subscribers. Uh, not sure how that 3 billion gets spread around to artists and, you know, where that money is really landing. But uh, people are excited that, that streaming does seem to be growing the subscriber base to a point where there is significant money in the pool. So that's that's something that people have debated about whether it could even go this far and, and with free options out there. So something worth watching. Well, doesn't uh, Spotify have um, some sort of regulation for their company where 70% of their revenue has to be paid out to rights holders or no, I don't think so. Huh. I don't know. I thought I'd heard that, but someone, someone, check someone, it out for next time. Yeah, someone should you you check it out, and then someone can call us or email us or weigh in in the show <laughs> notes about it. Tell us how wrong we were. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Well, that's the news. Let's let's get into the discussion about the big news item and uh, what, what implications it has. I want, I'm interested in people's feedback about what they thought about it. But this week, a total surprise at the end of the new iPhone announcement, the new Apple Watch announcement, and I forget, oh, and Pay. They announced Apple Pay. For a presentation that was pushing two hours, you think pretty much that's everything. But then, wait, there's more. U2 takes the stage. To play a song, 
And then after some awkward dialogue between Bono and Tim Cook, <laughs> they announced that not only is the album going to be available that day, but it is automatically being put into everybody's account who uses iTunes. Something 500 that's, million people, right? 500 million people, something that's never been done before, making what they claim to be the largest album release in the history of mankind. Uh, <laughs> so I have thoughts on it. Uh, I, I, it's been interesting to see what people, ch the chatter about it. I'm surprised that there's been some people that have been, been like very angry about this. Uh, you know, it really pisses me off when people give me stuff for free. It just angers me. <laughs> I know. Just, I thought. That, I thought that, that, so I that's out there. Yeah. I was going to say, I saw a bunch of Twitter comments from people who were like, get this U2 album out of my account. How the heck did, how the heck do I delete it? How dare you yeah. put this here? <laughs> like, I, yeah. Like it's like, it's just, they can't sleep at night until they rectify the situation. So anyway, you, there had been rumors, you know, back a while back, let me, a little bit more context for the conversation and then we'll, we'll dive in. Uh, I can't remember if it was the last April or when I can't remember, but Beyonce out of the blue launched her album. It was like, nobody knew it was coming out. There was no release date set. And then bam, Tuesday morning, all over iTunes. She took over iTunes. It was all Beyonce everywhere. And her fans went crazy. No one was expecting it. It was this revolutionary thing because normally album releases take months and months to plan, sometimes years if you're someone like Beyonce. And so it was like, what? There's a new album? Okay, let's go buy it. And there was, they took over the news that week because of it. So after that, there was rumors that that there was another artist that that was going to happen. And um, I just had a feeling it had to be you too. There's not that many artists that are that big that it would be a newsworthy event to surprise everybody. And there weren't that many artists that, you know, that were that big, that were totally due for a new album. And, and you uh, two and Apple have also had kind of a longstanding business relationship. They've had those like YouTube branded iPods and weren't they in a, yeah. an Apple commercial last year? Uh, they've been in several. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, so when they said there that morning when, before the app, announcement there was rumors that U2 was taking part in it like oh I bet U2's album's going to come out today so then when it was like oh U2's going to play I'm like okay they're going to announce it it's now available today it's out go to iTunes and I started refreshing my iTunes store to see if I could buy it but the interesting thing was that when they said but it's available in your account right now I had like this freak out moment. oh my gosh I was like texting with my friend uh, Peter uh some of you on the podcast know Peter uh, or listening to the podcast, no Peter, but we're texting back and forth. He's a big YouTube fan. I'm like, oh my gosh, how do I get it? Where's it on my phone? I'm trying to find it. And it was just like this, you know, for fans, it was far more thrilling to me to have it done that way than to say, oh, it's available in the iTunes store. So what, so did, what I were looked, you? So I looked on my, uh, my iTunes on my computer expecting it to be there and it wasn't there. You had to look in your purchase history like okay. recent purchase times, because they didn't, that was the other thing. People were freaking out. How dare they put a file on my computer or my phone? Unless you have your, your settings set to auto download, uh, it was just sitting in the cloud waiting for you to, to download. So um, that's, that's not the baby, is it, Chris? No, that's our oh. dog. <laughs> <laughs> the baby is a heck of a bark. It's <laughs> feeding uh, time, apparently. <laughs> so, I'm glad I'm not Desiree. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know what uh, your guys' thoughts on the matter are. Um, hmm. Knowing you're such a huge U2 fan, I feel hey, like... Hey, uh, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can take it, bring it. Well, I don't, I just am totally indifferent. Like, I just, I'm kind of indifferent to their music, but then the, I know this is totally like 1970s. Do we need to, do we need to give Hector a bone or something? Yeah, let me, let me grab Hector real quick. Just so. All right. All right. Chris, you can continue while, while the bolt goes and deals with the dog. Thanks. Uh, I know this is sounding like the old 1970s throwback or something, but the constant like corporate 
like it's this rock band that is supposed to i don't know be i don't know what u2 is even supposed to be anymore but i just feel like this rock band at this corporate apple culty product launch thing it just felt so smarmy to me and then like the, the part where the part where you know they're saying it's free and then bono's like well it's not free to you apple you know you're paying us big money. I'm like, oh, it's just so icky to me. Like, Well, the, that comment he did, there's a post on YouTube's website where Bono talks about that. And he was thought it was important to make the point that it wasn't them giving away the album for free. It was a gift from iTunes. And the reason being is he felt like he didn't want it to look as devaluing the music like no one's willing to pay an artist to make music anymore. And he kind of, he has a, a, a paragraph he writes about that on their site saying that making music costs something and it was important to us to make it known that Apple paid for this so it'd be a gift for you, but they're paying the bill because it costs money to make music and we want that to be known so people don't think, for the sake of future musicians, that that everyone should expect that it doesn't cost anything to make music. So. Sure. And I, I mean, I guess that, that, that bias that I have is not necessarily rational. You know, it's a great business opportunity for U2 and Apple. It's obviously great for all of their fans and potentially new fans that have never heard their music. Like, it's good. There's just some aspect of it that I'm like, are you a rock band or are you like a product launch strategist? I don't know. It's like, well, one thing that on the on the free tip, I, I know that Bono's made a big effort to say that this is not free. This is not the free that because they've said publicly a lot of times that music should not be free. Um, it is free. It's free to the customer. You know, yeah. like the culture of free is that the listeners, us, the listeners get the music for free. And a lot of artists have rallied against that, including you too. And I still think this is free just because money is exchanging hands in a different way. Um, I think you could we say similar. Care. We don't care. But yeah, but does, but does that matter though? Because it, it, the whole conversation about free is whether or not the artist can make a living. Uh, right. So if someone's footing the bill and you're reaching people who want the music and you're getting paid, does it but matter? sure, you 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 too is going to get paid, and Beyonce will get paid. But there's your average, or your maybe you know your sort of mid level artist isn't going to get paid. Yeah, right. I mean, it is it is continuing the sort of culture of free. So it is setting the expectations for music listeners that they can get music without paying for it. Um, and same with the streaming services. But you know, money exchanges hands with the streaming services. And people don't have to pay as well. So I think that the free is not always really free. It's just, it's free for the user, but there's still money to be made in advertising and, and business deals and everything else. Well, I thought one take I, I as an artist that I had that uh, I, I haven't heard anyone say, and maybe it's just because I'm dumb or something, but uh, I thought it was in interesting to hear you've got the biggest one of the biggest bands on the planet probably in the history of music one of the biggest bands uh who coming off a bad release you know they're they're always going to sell out stadiums and, and and whatnot or at least come close but uh you've got them who coming off a bad release They've got this, you know, a new album that they've been taking way too long to create. Probably a lot of drama in the background that uh, we don't know about. So for them, it kind of feels like an important release uh, that they're trying to, that took way too long. They just want to get it out there and get back to business of what they do and playing music. And it also it, shelters them from the risk of having another flop. Yeah, exactly. So they got all that. But then Bono said, we what's important to us is to make sure that we just want the most people possible to be listening to our music and to me i that to me it the way i took it i i felt that it was probably coming from a genuine place because ultimately i think you know a lot of times we, we talk we talk about uh 
making money from music. We talk about how to sell more music. And all those things are great, but to me as an artist, the 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 I don't care how I sustain myself as much as I care that the music and the art that I create that people actually connect with and enjoy it. So I would rather have a hundred, you know, million people get the album and, you know, maybe make not as much, but if a hundred million people are making are listening to my music, that's something. I can do something with that and that can propel my career. So that's that's why, you know, when you think about an artist, it's like, you know, if if all artists were truly worried about was getting paid, then we'd all be playing in wedding bands because you can make a pretty sweet deal off, you know, getting paid for playing music uh, in, in those kind of situations. But everybody wants to be able to create original art. They want their art to connect with people and they want to sustain themselves with it. And so I think for for them, they don't need the sustaining part because they've got more money than they'll ever know what to do with in their life. Uh, but there's still that desire as an artist to make sure the most people on the planet hear their music. And that's the right. way they did it. Well, they also make most of their money from playing ginormous concerts. And, and this is not going to hurt that business at all. <laughs> no. Sure. And, and who had they had two consecutive albums that were really kind of commercial failures from a stand, uh, sales standpoint, who knows what would, I don't know if that would really damage their, their concert reputation or anything, but it probably you know, no, no artist wants to little. suffer that yeah. so this, this way. They're just, Hey, we just basically distributed 500 million albums. Yeah. So, and, and uh, you know, for them, I, I saying that there's probably some drama. They, they had some, some fallouts with their longtime producer, Daniel Lanois. So I'm sure there was probably months and months and months and months of work that got scrapped. It was probably a lot of tense situations. And so it feels like, you know, if, if, if I'm an artist and a company came to me and said, hey, would you like your music to be distributed to 500 million people? The answer is always yes. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless, unless you're taking my children <laughs> or really putting me in a way that compromises some beliefs, then, uh, then yeah, I'll, I'll help you sell an iPhone. That's pretty <laughs> I was I was reading this article in The Atlantic um, yesterday about how during World War II, the publishing industry gave out like 120 million uh, books. And previous to that, like, you know, reading was really, reading kind of literature was more of a, a affluent activity. And then, um, giving away that many books after world war ii like saved the publishing industry because suddenly all those gis coming home were hungry for more stuff so i'm wondering if it'll you know if u2 comes out with another album that they actually just distribute in the regular old way if it'll you know suddenly they've got way more buying fans yeah, yeah well, i'm sure i'm, I'm sure ahead. itunes is hoping that this spurs more purchases yeah <laughs> well yeah i mean that's that's one thing that you know for a lot of folks, it's probably the first time they went and logged into their iTunes account in a long time and probably started looking around at other music. So to me, it, it, anything that gets people back into the music store, looking around, potentially spending some money going, hey, I just got this new album. What I'm, what else is there in here that I might like? You know, I'm going to start listening to some more music again. I mean, that that I guarantee you that scenario has played out for a lot of folks. Um, and yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, you can't complain about, you know, people getting more engaged with, with music and wanting to, you know, go in and, and check out other stuff. You know, it's funny. It just reminded me this is like the digital equivalent of what they used to do when um, labels through their distributors would send out like way more records to stores than they knew people were going to buy so they could boost their, um, what did it boost, their billboard it's like well, units shipped or something like that. So basically yeah. people were getting like gold and platinum records, even though they hadn't sold to that. Mm -hmm. ah, they just did the, the iTunes version of it. Well, well, <laughs> actually there's more news. I, I, I don't know that I sent you guys the link, but billboard came out saying they will not recognize any of these sales or any of these uh, transactions free or giveaways do not count towards the charts. But I remember what I was going to say uh, just a minute ago was, that there's an when this exclusive window closes, there's going to be 
a uh, a new version of the album that will be available everywhere that apparently will have a few more tracks i don't know if they're like different mixes or what it just said there'll be like four or five more tracks i think there's some like acoustic like, versions too maybe so yeah they're kind of a bonus version and that's also what will be available on cd as well so what will be interesting to see is how many they actually sell of this in the end because if they sell a lot it'll be kind of like hey you know they, they still sold more than they sold of their last one and a ton more people got it for free and, so and that would that'd be another argument in favor of using free as a marketing plug yeah well it worked for radiohead uh you know, it was a few years back where Radiohead gave away their album. It was a pay what you want type thing on their um, uh, on their website. I paid zero and took it for free. Uh, and then their album came out in regular stores later, and it did quite well. So, so we'll see. So I, I, I thought of Radiohead because when they did that, they announced it the surprise launch, pay what you want, get it for free. I was psyched because I really love that band. And I'm thinking like with you too, I'm really, I was kind of down on it. I'm indifferent, but if I were you and I loved them, I would think this is such a brilliant idea. So part of my response <laughs> to their, I didn't realize you were such a YouTube, you too hater. No, I, well, post Octung baby, basically like, yeah, well, I really I, like I, everything up till then and, and that album, but then everything after I'm kind of down on. Really? I love, uh, Oh man, my mind went blank. I told you that Pledge Music thing's broken my brain, so I can barely <laughs> barely think about anything. Uh, but uh, uh, what was the one with everything elevation? you can't leave behind? All that you can't leave behind. Can't, yeah. There you go. There you go. I like that album a great deal. There's some good stuff on all their albums. It's just a matter of you know the last album before the, this one that just came out had some great moments and some moments that made me cringe and going, guys, what happened? Um, <laughs> but so any. Let's let's discuss about uh, last couple minutes. Any implications on the industry at large? Is this just a flash in the pan, um, big deal? Because you know, a another storyline I forgot to put in the news was that it came out that the NFL is asking artists to pay to be in the halftime show, where before they just didn't pay. Now they're asking the artists to pay. That apparently uh, fell by the wayside, and they said, "Hey, we're not going to do that now." Um, but, but so you go from a scenario where the biggest TV show, biggest one time event in the history of the world, every time it happens is refusing to pay musicians and now asking them to pony up some cash to be on it because it's a good promotional opportunity. Yeah. When the NFL where is supposed we? to be a nonprofit. Yeah. Yeah. So where where have we come as musicians? The the biggest TV show on the on the planet won't pay us because because <laughs> it's a promotional opportunity. I'm sure that, I'm sure there's some fun units in there. The yeah. payment <laughs> fun units. But, and, oh lord! And now U two's giving away their album without you know with just out of the blue. And do these things? It's more so the U two thing. I, I just had remembered that Super Bowl thing. Just, do these things help hurt or is it just a a one off? Nobody cares. Well, I think more than um, more than a testament to sort of the devaluing of music, this sort of is a testament to the power of distribution. Um, and I think that musicians, you know, I mean, Radiohead realized it. They had the power to sort of distribute their album to a huge number of people by sort of turning it into a unique media event. And I think we'll probably see more artists doing that. Um, you know, when you think about the number of people who can reach through a platform like Apple, it's kind of amazing. And this is the first time that Apple has used their muscle in this way to sort of promote an artist. And I think that the, they'll probably do some more experiments in the future. And we'll probably see some other experiments from other tech companies Um and, you know, that reminds me, there was early on, I think, in some, um, I can't remember if it was Zune or what MP3 player, there were some MP3 players you could buy that came loaded with artist music. That was kind yeah. of an experiment that happened early on. That's what a lot of people were trying to do to compete with the iPod. 
So I don't know, we may see some more experiments sort of in that way of like artists getting attached to um, tech and being distributed through tech as sort of a bonus. I like the way that where you went with that. I, I was not expecting the, the power of distribution. <laughs> I, I see I see a CD Baby marketing campaign coming up yeah. with the well, power the, of distribution. The the power of distribution really only matters if the connection between the artist and the audience is already there. Though I feel like iTunes could have announced that my my album is preloaded into everyone's players, and no, you know. Plenty of people would listen to it, but not 500 million. Hey, right, like, well, so. hey, this this just in, literally, just popped up on Twitter. Apple, U2 promotion good for catalog sales. At iTunes, U2 currently has six titles in the top 40 and 18 in the top 100 best. And my, I, the tweet got cut off, so I'm assuming it's going to say songs. So, wow. so, it did something if people were going back and buying their old... They're old catalog, so. Yeah, I would imagine that was ha- that would be happening, too, is people who haven't listened to U2 in a long time are like, what was that one album I used to like to listen to? You know, and then they go and buy it. Well, and yeah, that's, that's true. Even if they don't listen to this new one, they're like, oh, I love Joshua Tree. I should buy that. Yeah, well, yeah. and also I think it points to the fact that, hey, when you've got a catalog, especially a long catalog of with fans that like it, uh, it gives you some leverage opportunities and that you don't always have to think about the new release as the moneymaker, but uh, maybe the one that inspires people to remember why they love the old stuff so much and go buy it. So who knows? All right. Well, it, it's been interesting to see the chatter out there. I It did not go the direction I expected with people uh, having so much disdain for the fact that someone put file potential file download in their account that's pretty been pretty funny i'm like you people are getting spam emails every day with viruses into your, your phone <laughs> someone gives you some some decent pop rock music and you have a cow come on how dare you tarnish my hard drive with i know YouTube how phone. dare you it's been so perfectly groomed if that YouTube <laughs> stuff starts fraternizing with my hip-hop collection there's gonna all hell's gonna break out that's what Phil from uh, from here at CD Baby. He was one of the ones that was upset and had to delete it immediately. And he's he's a big <laughs> hip hop person. I'm like, well, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> can he's, you delete it from your purchase history? I think so. I think you can. I think you can but pretend like it never. Right? I think you can like pretend it never happened. You know, my 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 final note. I would say of early observations. And by the way. I would love to have people listening weigh in on what they thought on the comments section for at cdbaypodcast.com or email us in uh, podcast at cdbaypodcast.com or you can call us at 360-524-2209. All that information is on the podcast website. But the last thing is that, you know, that I found most intriguing when you think about it, okay, this was an Apple product launch. Sure, Apple gets lots of coverage, but as far as a live event happening, there's a lot of people watching online, but it's it's not the Super Bowl. It's not probably, I don't even know how many people stream it. I don't know if there's stats out there, but it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the, the YouTube portion happened around noon. People at work, it's definitely not prime time, but somehow this event was able to launch a band bigger than what uh, launched something for a band bigger than, you know, say, like doing something at the Super Bowl or some of those bigger events. It's just interesting to me that how there's opportunities that that can actually propel your career that you may not think about. I would never go, oh, yeah, a product launch demonstration that we're going to be a surprise guest at the end is going to do something massive for my career. But, it, you know, you never know. Clearly, if it's an Apple event, you know something big is going to, happen as a result but it's just amazing how many people were watching that event and instantly knew what had happened it wasn't like i had to walk out in the cd baby and tell people hey guess what you two just did everybody already knew and they weren't streaming the 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 apple event either you know to a certain extent tech companies and tech ceos are the rock stars of today 
Yeah, that's that's what made the conversation between Bono and Tim Cook extra awkward. Bono was acting. <laughs> Tim Tim Cook looked like he'd never met a guy in a band before, and Bono looked like this guy could buy us all right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just don't look as cool doing what it, what they do. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. Need more leather. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So any final thoughts before we wrap up? Again, I'd love to get people's opinions. And They should have had you. Adam do all the talking. That dude looks cool no matter what he's doing or saying. I think they probably had to pay Adam an extra fee just so he'd show up for this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Adam? He's the bass player. Oh, oh okay, of you two. Yeah, he, he's out of all of them, he seems like the one that I think would, would probably roll his eyes the most. But... My final note is uh, one of the things that made me have some opinions about why they did this was an interview in Rolling Stone that they did about their last album. And it was with him. And he actually sounded, they actually had, were hurt feelings after the reception of the last album, people like trashing it. And, you know, they were, at the end of the day, they want to be artists that put out work that people enjoy and people just despised it and hated it and, and uh, they kind of had a chip on their shoulder. And so, um, uh, so anyway, just... Oh, you know, that brings up one question that hasn't been asked yet. Is the album any good? I like it. Okay, so it's, it's I, an improvement on the last one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the first... I've, I've been listening to it. Um, the first two songs are really good. The first song is going to be do well for them on their tour and... and uh, probably do well on radio. The second one, I think, is a really good song as well. Um, it's different. Danger Mouse produced a lot of it, so there's no Daniel Lanois guitars on it um, or Steve Lillywhite type stuff on it. It's all... That's what their other 15 albums are for. Well, the last one, it it, it tends to lean more towards this one, but uh, as far as what they did musically. But yeah, I think it's a good record. I think people are going to like it. Um, and uh, you never know. It could sell multi-platinum even after giving it away for free. We shall see. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the podcast. Uh, again, you can weigh in at the comment section at cdbabypodcast.com. You can email us at podcast at cdbabypodcast.com. And you can call our listener line. Where is that number? I had it in front of me just a second ago. Oh, it's on the podcast website. Oh, here it is. 360-524-2209. Call it. Say something intelligent. We'll put it on the podcast. So Say something really stupid and we'll put it on the podcast too. Yeah, actually, do, do <laughs> that. That, that that's, that's the express pass to getting on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it. All right. See you later. Peace right. out. Take, take it easy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. been listening to the cd baby diy musician podcast broadcasting from portland oregon usa 